How did you get into real estate? I met this guy and his wife was a realtor. And he was like, yeah, you know, whenever you're ready, let's do it. And I was like, well, I don't have 100,000 saved up to like buy it in cash because that's what I thought you had to do. Like, but then he started explaining to me like hard money. It was hard to find a deal. I ended up did finding one. How old were you? I was eight, 18, 19. Damn, you flipped your first house at 18 years old? Yeah. That's crazy. I was even surprised. I was like, because I didn't know how I was going to make it. I didn't have a calculator. I didn't have like all the right fundamentals. You didn't have a calculator? No. Like how much money did you make? 27,000. So you made 27,000 at 18. Yeah. So you're probably like, I'm rich. I'm rich. Welcome to the Wealthy Investor Podcast, the number one podcast for flippers, wholesalers, and real estate entrepreneurs. And today's podcast, I have Caitlin Ortiz. She is a beast real estate investor from Houston, Texas. She's only 22 years old and she is killing it. How are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I feel like I've seen you grow up a little bit, yes, right? Absolutely. I've known you a couple of years and now you're freaking all grown at 22. Yeah. I mean, if, if you consider that grown. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, um, for people who don't know who you are, can you give us your quick backstory? Yeah, absolutely. So um, <clears throat> I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. Um, you mm -hmm. know, I currently reside in Houston. Um, I'm Cuban, so there typical, you go. typical, cool. Mi yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, typical Miami. Um, I uh, <clears throat> actually, a lot of people assume that like I came from money or like I had money to just yeah. start this business, but I really didn't. Um, I actually started with nothing. My parents had nothing. Like, I mean, we're f I'm first generation. So, Dang. yeah, like our, our, my, my dad moved over here, you know, um, and so did my mom. And then they lived in Miami. Then we moved to Texas because it was just a better way of living for us, you yeah. know, like cost of living, everything. And so um, I had a little bit of trouble in school. You know, I know we talked about that, uh, but. When did we talk? The, the, the <laughs> listeners never heard it, so okay, you got to okay. tell them. Thank All right, you. so you got in trouble in school. What happened? Uh, got in trouble in school. I was, uh, yeah, you know, had all of it expelled. Oh, you know, no. I was suspension, detention, like everything, you name it. I was just doing things that I shouldn't be doing with the wrong crowd. Okay. Um, but eventually, like, whenever you go from state to state, the credits don't transfer. So I already had that type of problem coming into Texas. So they were like, okay, we well, need to take a step back. You need to go a year behind it. I was like, oh my God, like yeah. I'm gonna be in a class of maybe people <laughs> that are younger than me. I'm like, this is horrible. Then I was still getting in trouble, didn't learn my lesson. And then uh, ended up getting sent to like one of those like alternative schools. Yeah, opportunity schools. Opportunity schools. Yeah. And so I got sent there, actually um, left on like good behavior, then ended up leaving. Then got sent back, and Damn, then the second Caitlin? time I, yeah, the second time I got sent back, back yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the second time I got sent back, I was like, um, yeah, I can't do this. Like they were like, you know, you're gonna probably repeat another year, and I was like, no, this is just not worth my time. Yeah. So I ended up dropping out, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have to figure out what I need to do with my life, and so I was like, I mean, I should get some sort of paper, you know, saying that I graduated something. So. Yeah. I got a GED, but I was always smart. Like that was my, I think that was my problem. I was always way too smart for my own good. Okay. And so um, I um, ended up getting my GED and I started working and I got a part-time job. Um, and I just, I don't know, I was just surrounded with different people. Obviously these people were older than me. Like I was like just turned 16. And so I was like, well, I don't have anything going for me. All my friends are still in high school. Like I don't have any friends. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna work, work, work. Ended up working. And I did a like a sales job, and so mm -hmm. I was there for like six months, and I became like number one in the company. Yeah. And I honestly didn't even know I could do that, yeah. you know. So um, from there, I stayed there for like five years. Ended up leaving. Still one of the top salesperson. They switched me over to a commission role. I was making like ten dollars an hour at first. So go, going from like ten dollars an hour to commission, I left there making like eighty five, ninety thousand a year. Dang. And I was able to save up all that money. Yeah. Yeah. So then, how did you get into real estate? So it's kind of funny because um, my family, they watch HGTV. And like, yeah. you know, now when you do the business, like nothing the same. Yeah. And so I, when I growing up, I was just watching. I was like, that's something I'd want to do. Like, I don't know what it was. But when I was 15, like, like when I dropped, I was like, yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I just knew. Dang. And so I had a, a family member who was in real estate who did flip houses and her husband does construction. Um, so I asked her and I was like, hey, like, you know, I want to get into this business. Like, what would you recommend? money wise I need to start she's like just save 30 grand and so from like the age I was of like 15 to like that 
career in Best Buy, saved up 30 grand, and I was like, okay, well, I have it. Like, now what do I do with it? Mm -hmm. And so she actually didn't even end up helping me. I ended up networking with people that I knew at that job, mm -hmm. and I met, ended up meeting, like, a realtor. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I met, up, I met this guy, and his wife was a realtor, and mm -hmm. she flipped, they flipped homes together. Um, she wasn't the best, but, like, she was great for me to get started and so mm -hmm. she, he was like yeah you know whenever you're ready let's do it and I was like well I don't have you know a hundred thousand saved up to like buy it in cash because that's what I thought you had to do like I thought you had to <laughs> buy them in cash and he was like no but then he started explaining to me like hard money mm -hmm. and then I was like okay like this is interesting like um and then so she was like okay like let's sit down so we sat down we went over it and uh you know we went over how hard money works and then they're like yeah just go get pre-approved so I got pre-approved they like, gave me like a loan for like 200 220 Mm -hmm. And so it, then it was just a matter of like finding a deal. Mm. And so that was hard. It was hard to find a deal. Uh, they had like had to find like wholesalers. And, you mm -hmm. know, um, whenever I got close to finding a deal, somebody else came and bought it. So mm -hmm. and then I, you know, I wasn't the highest bidder. So then eventually I ended up did finding one. And so mm -hmm. I found that one and I had like every problem that you could possibly think of. Mm -hmm. And so even at the end of it, once it was all said and done, I was even surprised. I was like, because I didn't know how I was going to make it. I didn't have a calculator. I didn't have, like, all the right fundamentals. <laughs> you didn't have a calculator? No. Like, I was just doing math, like, simple math on a piece of paper. I'm like, okay, well, 200 minus what I put into it yeah. minus this minus that, like, should give me that, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> I was just kind of like, well, I mean, I don't know what's the worst that could happen. I lose and how old were you? I was eight, 18, 19. Damn, you flipped your first house at 18 years old? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. So to cut you off your story but like when i was 18 dude i was doing drugs bro <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't trying to flip no real estate i was not trying to flip no real estate i might have flipped some drugs i might have flipped <laughs> some drugs yeah but that's about it so yeah. damn that's really good that yeah. you started so young mm -hmm. so you got that first deal and then I'm, I'm guessing you got it from a wholesaler yes okay and then how did you get a hard money loan at 18 yeah, so I had good credit. Um, I uh, I, w I researched. So I'm, when I was when I was 15, I was like, you know, I I'm not in school anymore. Like I have Google, so I'm like, okay, well, I gotta figure out how to like live life. So I'm like, okay, credit seems like it's important. So yeah, um, I was looking into it, and I was like, okay, it seems like I need to have like a 700, 750, or higher credit score. That seems like a a pretty good credit score to have to be able to get like loans or like credit cards. Um, I didn't know why, but I was like, I seem it seems like I need that, you know. Jeez. So I um, I found out that you can put yourself on like an authorized user. Yeah. So I asked my mom. I was like, Do you have any cards that like have like good credit history that's like no late payments, like low balance? And she was like, Yeah. Why? And I was like, Can I be put on it? She said, No. And I was yeah. like, Well, please. And she was just like, She said no for a long time, but then eventually I can like convinced her yeah. and I was like this is actually gonna help me out mm. and so she ended up doing it and so right when I turned 18 I had like a 730 yeah. um and then actually my 18th birthday I moved out too yeah yeah so I moved out and then um you know I had good credit so they ran my credit they saw the cash that I had saved up from that job and then they're like hey here's your loan that we can give you got it yeah so okay so you're 18 you had good credit you got uh, you got qualified for a, a hard money loan, mm -hmm. but where'd you get the money for the down payment, rehab, and holding costs? That was from the, my my job at Best Buy. So you just from savings. Savings. You didn't have you didn't raise any money. No. How much was your down payment? My down payment. So I had a really good deal. Like they were offering me. Um, I don't remember the exact terms, but my down like to the I didn't bring more than like 5k to the table okay so it was, almost, it was probably like about 100 percent financing yeah or something, like, something that. like that yeah. yeah it was a pretty good loan yeah and i think a lot of people don't even know that 100 percent finance financing exists yeah in like smaller markets yeah or 100%. like cheaper markets yeah well honestly it's i think it was just like that particular deal yeah and like because that mark like it was in houston and i feel like houston's a pretty big market but that yeah. specific house in that area yeah, yeah yeah wasn't like it was like kind of like on the outskirts a little bit yeah yeah and i don't mean smaller markets like population i think smaller markets like like purchase prices oh yeah yeah for yeah, sure 100 yeah because yeah, yeah. yeah. i know they do that in texas ohio and mm -hmm. other places like that in vegas yeah you're not getting 100 percent cali you're not getting 100 percent. yeah but um so you got 100 percent loan about right yes you put a little bit down mm -hmm. then how did you find your construction crew 
Hey guys, quick break from the podcast. First of all, thank you for listening to the Wealthy Investor Podcast. Also, I want you to know in the description of this video, there is a link. If you wanna do deals with me in Las Vegas, California, or anywhere in the country, go to the link in the description, fill out the information. If you fill that out, you'll get access to the deals that we're wholesaling, but also fund a deal and partner with you, or I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you want me to help you get your first deal, or help you scale your business, just go to the link of the description. Now let's get back to the podcast. So the realtor ended up recommending me somebody, but they were very like overpriced. And yeah. so, um, you know, she was like, no, like he's really good. Like he's going to be able to finish it up. But I'm like, you know, I'm sure he's amazing, but he just doesn't fit the numbers. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. he's not going to work for me. So I ended up just like cold calling, finding people, like vetting them out, which I thought I was vetting them out. I didn't yeah. even know how to vet somebody out. So yeah. I ended up finding somebody and he wasn't good at all. Um, I remember like one time he like we had on the scope of work like change out the tubs like very basic you know yeah. like we're doing a flip like remodel it and then he's like yeah yeah we uh we changed out the tub and I was like that's painted like yeah, yeah it's yeah, clearly yeah. painted <laughs> <laughs> and he was like oh um like I don't remember what excuse he gave me he's like oh yeah. uh, uh and then he ended up just changing it yeah but like it took a lot longer than needed and there were certain things that because if it was like in a smaller and like a weird it wasn't like in the city of Houston it was like kind of like on the outside so they have you know like those type of cities they have specific like things you need to do so you have to go into city hall with your license to get certain things oh, damn. so like one of the first things i told him was like, okay well obviously water electricity gas he never went to go get like the gas permit yeah so after we did the entire renovation um they pulled the gas and we had to do a repipe at the end oh after damn. it was all done and then that cost me like eight grand damn yeah so how much did you spend on the first rehab you think um 40,000 plus 40, that 000. eight grand, so 48,000. Dang. Yeah. And then, so you had 48 grand. That's crazy. Yeah, 18. well, the hard money lender, they oh, had the Oh, the hard rehab. money lender uh -huh. paid for the rehab. Yeah. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But it was, like, was tough because I was like, you know, it was hard to, like, manage the money because I was like, I didn't know how how much I needed to have for, like, my monthly. I didn't know how much. Like, I and again, I didn't really have, like, a calculator. I was just yeah. kind of doing it as I was going. So yeah. I was kind of, like, struggling in that part yeah. at first. And then after that, I was like, I never want to do that again and then like that lasted for five seconds and i was like okay i want to get more houses Got it. okay <laughs> yeah so then after you sold your house your first one you were 18 mm -hmm. right how much money did you make Twenty seven thousand. So you made twenty seven thousand at eighteen. Yeah. You're, or no, at, yeah, at eighteen. So yeah. you're probably like, I'm rich. I'm rich. <laughs> I literally, <laughs> I literally <laughs> went to my mom's house and I was like, Mom, like let's like get in the car. And she was like, Where are we going? I was like, I have a surprise. And she was like, Okay. So we get in the car. We were like driving for a while. She was like, Where are you? Where are you going? Like, are we going to your house? Yeah. And then she was like, No. I was like, well, No, we're not going to my house. And then. I uh, ended up taking her to the place like the before we closed, like the yeah. day before I closed um, with the new, like that new buyer, and so um, like I got like a shirt, one of my like best buy shirts. It was like super dirty too. I didn't, yeah. I wasn't prepared. I didn't have a blindfold or anything. Yeah. So I like took her out the car and I like, hey, put the shirt on. Like and I like and then I like, you know, told her, okay, take the shirt off. And then she was like, you bought me a house. I was like, no, I didn't <laughs> buy you a house. <laughs> You're I, like, damn, I'm messing it yeah, up. Yeah, I was like, man, that was that would have been so cool. <laughs> like, but no, that and was not even cool. That anymore. was not. That's, that's not cool. It's like, forget what I did. It's like, yeah, this is like small t compared to like yeah. buying her house. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up showing it to her, and she was like so proud. Like she was like crying and everything. Damn. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, I also kind of feel better now. And yeah. so she called my dad, and my dad the same way. He was like, what? Like how? Because I didn't tell anybody. Like I didn't tell nobody in my family. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell like. I'm not a living soul. Dang. Like the only person who knew was that realtor. Okay. Yeah, and then she was like, "How'd you get the money?" Like, it's not like I was like selling drugs to get the money. Yeah, like, yeah, she was. Yeah. I was just like, I've been working at Best Buy. Like, I've been making, I've been saving it up. She's like, "You make that good money there?" Like, yeah. And so she, uh, she was like, "Yeah." She was, she was just proud. She's like, and then she was like, "I want to do one with you." So okay. she, she just always supported me after. You know, she's yeah. that's that's just like her character. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, dude. I remember. I think my first flip, dude. I was like 27, 28. Really? Yeah, so you did it 10 years earlier than me, which pisses me <laughs> off. My parents failed me, dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think my parents prepared me for any of that. Like I like oh, to yeah, this no. day they're pretty pretty shocked with all the things that I've done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I think it's funny that you talked about your mom like 
you know, at the beginning, not wanting to help you with the credit thing mm -hmm. and then not knowing. So I was kind of like the same thing. Like my mom had no idea. Like, yeah, she still kind of like doesn't. So know. she'd see that. Yeah. I mean, how it is like, you know, sometimes like they think that it's like a scam. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah that's yeah, exactly yeah. what they think. Yeah. They're yeah. like, oh, be careful. Yeah. So you made the 27 K. Then what happened? So from there, I was I, I like realized, OK, I was like, you know, I'm am I going to do this for real? Like, is this going to be like a business or am I, you know, is am I going to make this like a full-time thing or am I yeah. just going to like want it done? I'm rich now, you yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah. so um, I was like, no, yeah, a hundred percent. So my next step was like, okay, well, I don't want to pick up anything until I figure out how to make this like a full-time thing. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I was obviously still working at like Best Buy. I flipped the house while I was working there. Like that was yeah. the hardest thing to do because I had to wake up like super early, go over there, manage that, then go to work, and like it was Dang. it was the worst. Like I and I did that for a while. Like since I was 18, I would wake up at like probably like, three in the morning, and then I wouldn't go to sleep till like 10. Dang. And I would do it every single day. I would work every single day. What would you do at three in the morning? So okay, when I was 18, I had just moved out, so I was like, I need money. And yeah. so I need more money because yeah. now I'm paying for my rent and I'm yeah. paying for bills and stuff. And so I went and got a, like a job at um, 24 Hour Fitness. Oh, okay. I, I worked out a lot that during that time. I was like, this is perfect for me. I was like, get a free gym membership, and then they wake <laughs> up. Uh, <laughs> they wake up early. Um, I mean, the, they open early, so I'm able to just go there from like five to ten, and then from ten to eleven. No, ten to eleven thirty. I would like go home walk my dog and then yeah. go to Best Buy and then I would leave at like uh, eight and then from like eight to 10 ish, I mm. would like find deals. Dang. And I would do that every single day. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. And then once I like surpassed that and I was making the commission, I was like, okay, I don't necessarily need that 24 hour finish job. So I was, um, <clears throat> what was I doing? I completely forgot what I was doing. Oh yeah. So I was, I was, yeah, so I went from doing that, then getting the commission job, because that was a big change for me. Because like mm -hmm. I had I had worked at a Best Buy, but yeah. it wasn't the Best Buy that like I was working with where I got commission because it was completely different. Like I had to go to a completely different store, yeah. move completely. Like I had to go closer towards downtown. Mm -hmm. So when I went closer towards downtown, um, like that store was like two times the store that I was at before. Mm -hmm. And then they had different products. Like they, they had more of like a premium, you know, um, like sales, I guess you can say. And so yeah. I was doing that. And then I had the money, so I started doing the flips. I woke up at the same time. I was already so used to it. And I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go to the house. But the thing, it was like, it was like 30, 40 minutes. So it was like 30, 40 minutes drive from there and then 30, 40 minutes drive back and then yeah. like working and then mm. doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you find your, like, next deals? So my next deals, um, I ended up networking and going to events. I was like, that seems like a smart thing to do. So I went and figured out, like, who are the local big players in my area. Yeah. Um, and I quickly figured out, like, I don't really like any of them. You know? Oh, really? No. They were, I mean, they did, like, wholesale, but there was nobody who was, like, doing flips like that. Like, okay. there was nobody out there doing, you know, flips at the level that I wanted. So there was no, like, mentor that I could really, like, look, in, uh, look up to in a sense. Yeah. But, I mean, I did utilize the fact that they had all these you know um deals so yeah. i used to find them and then um <coughs> i actually ended up getting into the program and that like i had like followed ryan for a while and i was like yeah. i don't know if this is like a scam or not but like yeah. you know let's just do it see what happens yeah so i got into the program because i knew i was going to start my business so i had started you know i got an llc did it the right way and then yeah. i started the program around the same exact time yeah and then when i did that i had had a calculator now and I was like, oh my God. Like, you finally this got a calculator. Yeah, I was like, this we is like. We gave you all the resources. We gave you all the resources. I was like, this is a game changer. I was like, this is. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh my God. God. Like, this is an ARV and yeah, then it's yeah, going to like yeah. your max allowable offer. I'm going to make it 10%. Like, this is That's amazing. so funny. Dude. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Like, this is, this is going to change the game for me. <laughs> how much did you, how much did you pay at that time? Um... I think like just to start off, it was like three thousand or okay. something. Like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was doing yeah. like one of those. That was pre Biden's America. <laughs> <laughs> that was pre Kamala Harris. So yeah, yeah. So prices I'll, were down. Prices <laughs> were down for sure. Yeah. yeah but no. you know what's funny? So yeah. when I started working with Ryan right in the education space, um, we launched the rookie coaching program. Right. I don't. Mm -hmm. know, did you do all star rookie? I did rookie. Yeah, you did rookie. Yeah. yeah. So I posted on Instagram. Like, hey, I'm going to start coaching people, uh, beginners. Uh -huh. This is such a blessing to have you here. Think yeah. about this. This is crazy. 
So uh, I was like, dude, I want to help. <laughs> oh, man, dude, this is crazy. So I was like, dude, I want to help. Yeah, uh, I want to help like beginner investors start flipping. And then he saw my post and he was like, dude, let's just do it together. Mm -hmm. You know, we could build something cool. I was like, okay, cool. So we're like, all right, we're going to do the rookie coaching program. So when we launched it, we literally launched it together. Okay. I was, I was going to coach it and I was going to lead it. He was going to market it. Okay. Right. So he posted it. And then when we first started, it was a hundred dollars. It was $500 a year. Really? Yeah. That's insane. It was insane, right? So we launched it. We're like, it's $500 a year. Da, 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 da. And I used to do the sales for it. Okay. So I was coaching. and <laughs> So you were, you were like on the phone like, hey, do you want our $500 yes, package? Yes, yes. Oh, my but God. Listen to this, though. People didn't want to buy it. People were like, no, it's a scam. Really? Yes. How? And it's $500. I like. don't know. And I, and I would literally be on the phone. And I'm like, dude. I could show you all my flips. I could show you all of Ryan flips. Like, you get this, you get that, you get that. And people are like, nah, nah. And then, yeah, like, fast forward, obviously, like, probably a thousand something people went through it. But, yeah, that's crazy to see that even though, obviously, you did everything on your own. Yeah. But how that small thing affected you is crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, like, I did, like, you, like, to your point, like, yeah, I did all those other things, but then when I joined the program and then I had that, you know, a calculator and then yeah. I had, a, like, a course and, yeah. like, an actual, like, you know, guidance to, yeah. like, what I'm needing to do, yeah. like, that actually changed it uh, significantly for me. Yeah. And it wasn't, like, you know, anything where it was, like, super crazy overwhelming information. Like, it was very, like, exactly what you needed. Yeah. Exactly what you needed. And then, so once I had that and then I had the LLC... And then um, I had networked with a bunch of people. Deals started just coming to me. And then yeah. I, I ended up meeting this broker who I still use to this day. He's amazing. His name is Elijah Levy. Um, and he's able to find deals on the market, but, like, at a discount. Like, I don't know. They're, like, you, every, you know, the, you know the saying, like, needle in the haystack? Yeah. He finds all of them. Like, every uh, single okay. one of them. And so he gives me a lot of deals, too. And then I get deals from wholesalers. Um, yeah. And so that's how I ended up getting these deals. And then I had... From the broker. From the broker. And a wholesaler. And a wholesaler. Got it. Yeah. So how did you buy your next deal? So I bought my next deal. I It's it's crazy how I started. My next deal, I went lower than what I started with. Like, my ARV on my first one was, like, 220 Yeah. And then my second one was 160 150 yeah. 160 And then I went from 150 160 to, like, three, uh, 350 and yeah. then from 350 and went to 500. Okay. And then I stayed in the 500s for a little bit. Yeah. And then I went up to like the millions. Yeah. And then, but what the first few ones, I was doing my own cash. Mm -hmm. um, I think only the second one, I did my own cash. Then I discovered private money. Cause in the program, you guys talk a lot about like, you know, utilizing private money and yeah. then um, raise. Cause I didn't know that you can, similar to hard money, I didn't know you can raise third party funds yeah. to do your deals. And then you just pay them out like a return, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> And so when I discovered that, I was like, wow, another game changer. So I started networking within yeah. the community to figure out, like, okay, who has money? Who can I, like, um, you know, network with? And I ended up finding a lot of people in the community. Mm -hmm. um, but none of them actually ended up doing that deal. I ended up finding other people um, and reaching out to, like, Facebook groups. Because I think, I don't remember if it was Susie or D'Amico, but they were like, hey, like, go on to the Facebook groups and, like, yeah. find it. And so... I ended up raising my own private money mm -hmm. and then at a crazy high rate, but it still worked in the numbers um, because they were like, <laughs> they were like, well, They're you like never. They're 30%. You're like, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. <laughs> so uh, I was like, okay, well, let's just do it because I don't want to use my money. And so then from there, once I had like the relationship that I've used somebody else's money, it was easier to, for me to get more of other people's money at a lower rate. Yeah. I still want to go at an even lower rate than where I'm at right now, but. What do you pay now? Right now, I pay like 15%. That's pretty low for like gap funds or for that's for the gap entire funds. thing? Well, I would say a little bit of both, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's funny that I, I went to my first workshop with Ryan before, like, he had an education when he was just like, oh, I'm going to just do a little qu quick workshop, right? Mm -hmm. A couple things he talked about. One was the MLS, and I didn't know you could find deals off the MLS, mm -hmm. even though it's like, seems so common sense. Yeah. But I remember I was like, I didn't know you could do this. And then after my first one, I was like, oh, crap, like it's actually real. And I think, I think people just, they never get to that like, oh crap, it's real part. Yeah. 
And 100%. until you do, it's kind of like hard. Mm -hmm. I think it's just more like a mental block than it is like how hard really is it? Because yeah. I feel like it's well, not that hard. It's not. Like you honestly are so, it's so surprising that you don't need, people don't even realize like not all the homes that are on the market are like ready to go. Like some of them are, are a lot of them are as is. Like, yeah. you know, <clears throat> I actually walked the house the other uh, last week. There was like a tree to going through it. And, yeah. you know, they had it listed on the market. Yeah. And, um, and then that, you know, that neighborhood obviously wasn't selling for that low. But, yeah. I mean, what can you do when there's a tree in your house? <laughs> like, yeah. uh, you know, that person, you know, what are they going to do? Give it to a wholesaler? Like, not most, like, common sense. It's like, oh, I'm going to put my house in the market. Yeah. And people yeah. don't realize that. But most of those deals go by fast. So yeah. you just got to make sure you're actively looking for them. So before we get into, like, how you scaled your business, why, like, why do you think you had so much hustle and then what can people do to get that hustle? Cause I think that's like the thing that people yeah. are missing to get to where they want to get to financially. That's a really good question. So because of my past and like all the crazy hood rat stuff I used to do. <laughs> what kind uh, of hood rat stuff did you used to do actually? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a different podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's just audio. Just, no? yeah. Yes. Like so, um, you know, like when I did all that, um, my parents, they weren't as supporting. Like I specifically to my dad, like he was like a big um, key person, like saying, you know, you're not going to be anything in life. Like you're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. And, like just very much like discouraging. Your dad told you that? Yeah. Dang. Like constantly, like every day. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you were just being bad. though. Because I was just being bad. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's your so, fault. It's not his fault. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You'll deal well, with that trauma later. Yeah, we'll th well, true. that's a that's a trauma for another day. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so he would always just kind of like you know bring me down, and like you know really embedded in my head that I wasn't gonna do it and I couldn't do it because I didn't go the typical route of graduating high school, going to college, like doing the yeah. things that like he worked in his eyes worked so hard for her, for us or for me to do. And like, you know, the typical like go and yeah, do like it. Kind of immigrant mentality. Exactly, kinda. exactly. Yeah. And so I was just like, no, like I'm gonna prove him wrong. Like I was like, that's like the least thing that I'm gonna do. And so Dang. I've but you know what's crazy? I, I have my work ethic from him. Like yeah. he works so hard yeah. every single day, never misses. Like I remember we didn't go to a lot of uh, you know, vacations growing up, mostly because we didn't have that much money. But like if we did, it was like a two or three day vacation to like the beach. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And in Miami Beach that we live in. Yeah. You know, so it wasn't like anything crazy, but he works so hard and I have that same work ethic. And so ever since I started a job, like I wasn't gonna be the person like sitting around waiting for instructions. Like if I needed to like if I didn't have anything to do, like I would pick up something and I would just clean. Yeah, yeah. Like because yeah. I didn't want to seem like I wasn't working. Like yeah. to me that seemed wrong. For, yeah. I don't know why. Like I've yeah. always been that way. And then the people that I used to work with, my managers, they loved that. They like loved me right at the gate because I worked so hard and then I didn't really know anything about sales, but I was like, you know, I just talked about it. Like I knew about it, you yeah, know? Yeah, and yeah. so, um, you know, I ended up selling these things. I remember my first week there, they had like this specific product that was like, that just came out and I got sold. And they're like, how'd you sell it? I was like, I don't know. I just offered it. And that's yeah, really yeah. what it is. Like you need to offer things. Yeah, and yeah, then once yeah. you start offering, you're like, you know, people are interested and then like, oh wow, they're interested. And then you talk a little bit about it. Yeah. What I used to do, I used to literally read off of whatever was there. Like if it said, oh, you know, this product is brand new, it's 2024, I would literally read that, yeah, it just came back in 2024 and like yeah, yeah. pretend like I knew exactly like what it was and everything like that. Yeah. And so because of that mm -hmm. and my dad and then that work ethic and then sales, honestly, like sales made me that type of person where I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna be the first person to like approach a customer. And so like all of that combined um, I think that just kind of helped my mindset. Yeah. And then also the fact that like I wanted to be, you know, breaking generational curses. So I wanted to like, you know, move my family from where we were at to like a whole new level. Like I want whatever I leave behind to be like, you know, not necessarily like a legacy, but like a footprint. Like I yeah. was here, you know, like I, I don't want my kids to get it out the mud. You yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. that's just what I want. Yeah, I think, so I always use this analogy, right? And people get pissed when I tell stories, but I tell them anyways. <laughs> so, so, uh, so there's an analogy that I always used to think of in the beginning of my career, right? So let's say there's a tree of fruit, right? Okay. There's fruit on the tree, right? 
there's kind of three types of people, right? Mm -hmm. There's the person that's going to stand next to the tree and they're just going to wait. They're just like, one day, you know, I'm going to get rich. One day I'm going to get an opportunity. I'm going to get a fruit. It's going to happen one day. I'm just going to wait. Like time will make the fruit fall. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Then there's another person who's like, you know what? I need to like learn how to get a bow and arrow or a boomerang. And I'm going to like learn that. And then I'm going to get one fruit at a time. Right. Okay. I'm going to just learn the skills and learn everything that I need to do first. And then I'll go get fruit. Right. Then there was like me and kind of like you Mm -hmm. is like a kind of like a crazy person. (laughs) Well, they'll just walk up to the tree and they'll just shake Shake the the tree. tree. (laughs) I was just thinking that. (laughs) I wasn't anything else. I'm just going to shake the tree. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. I remember as a kid, like, you know, you're 50 pounds trying yeah. to like shake a tree to get yeah, some down. Yeah, 100%. But that's the reality of the world. Yeah. There's the there's the crazy people that are like, I'm going to just walk up to them and just kind of like yeah. see what happens. And then there's the people that are like, well, what kind of LLC? Do I need an S Corp or, or a F, F Corp? Do I need to? <laughs> what about taxes? What about insurance? What about this? What about that? Yeah, all of that I got yeah. Can someone hold my, my hand? hand? Yeah. Like, yeah like, <laughs> no, all of that went out the window. I was like, I, I, people definitely thought I was insane. They're like, you're going to flip a house. Like, at yeah. first, like, they're like on, like on TV. And I was like, yeah, yeah like on TV. Yeah. Like, what, like, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, what happened? So, you started buying more deals. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? And then I was like, man, I'm really overwhelmed with this paperwork. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to sit around and do paperwork all day. So I was like, hmm, I need, like, an assistant or something. Yeah. Or, like, somebody to help me out. Yeah. And so um, it's funny because, like, my best friend that I grew up with, mm-hmm. she was doing, like, virtual assistants. She would, like, post a lot. And I'm like, she seems pretty good. Yeah. But I hadn't talked to her in years because mm-hmm. I had, like, moved from, you know, Miami. And then, um, like, I hit her up randomly one day. And then I was like, hey, like, you know, do you can I, like... I don't know, can we, like, have a meeting or something? She's like, yeah, like, let's book a call. And mm-hmm. so we booked a call, and then um, basically she booked the call, and then we had it, and then she was just, like, okay, asking me, like, general questions. Like, well, what mm-hmm. do you need? And, like, she had, like, a something to fill out, and so I had put there, like, you know, real estate, and she's like, she told me straight up, like, I don't know anything about real estate. Like, I don't know how I can help you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, like, you're hired. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, can you start, like, immediately? And she was like... Yeah, um, and I was like, okay, great. So I started giving her a bunch of paperwork, and oh like, God. like literally the same day, I was like, I, I was like, I don't care who it is, I need, I need somebody yeah. to help me. And so I actually taught her every, like, she didn't know anything about ARV, like, she didn't yeah. know anything about purchasing a house, like, yeah. had, I mean, she was the same age as me, so she had no idea, like, anything. Yeah. And so I just, I taught her everything, like, she mm-hmm. became an assistant, like a TC all in one, and so, um, you know, now. She still works with me. She actually works only for me now. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, she knows so much. Like, yeah. she's, like, to me, kind of like how you and Ryan started. Like, yeah. that's kind of how I see her, too. Yeah. Yeah. What about, so, okay, your first year you did one deal, 27K. How much did you do your next year? So, next year I picked, I was in the, in, able to pick up, like, four or five deals. Okay. And so, I made around, like, 200000 $200,000 yeah. your second year. Yeah. So, I feel like that's kind of... For me, when I f- when I first started with Ryan um, on the coaching side, my only goal was for people to just make a living in real estate. Okay. It was never like, dude, I want to create millionaires and I want to do this and mm-hmm. I want to do that. I just wanted people to just be able to make money. Yeah. So they could do live life and not have to have a job. Yeah. 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 Not working full time and you know slaving away f- doing something they don't want to do. Mm-hmm. So, like, after you started making that much money, like, what happened to you, like, personally? Honestly, I pretty much stayed the same. Like, I've always had the same, like, I I put myself in the mindset where I was still broke. Like, I was still the 18-year-old kid, like, you know, uh, working at 24-Hour Fitness, working at Best Buy. Like, I've never changed that mindset because I didn't care how much money was coming in. Like, I mean, yeah, I was able to, like, you know, live more comfortably because back then, like, I would always eat, like, I would eat chicken and rice, like, every single day, you know? <laughs> so, like, I was able to go to, like, you know, McDonald's. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was able to, like, you know, get better food and, like, do things like that. And yeah. so, um, you know, just take care of myself better. Um, and so I would honestly just, you know, take care of me more. Mm-hmm. But, like, I never went and, like, did anything crazy where I, like, got a super expensive apartment. Like, I just kept yeah. everything low yeah. and, like, 
um, you know, very, I, I don't, I feel like I didn't really need, or I still don't really need much. Yeah. You know, I, I don't care for all those things. So for those, for that next year, those four or five deals, how did you find them and all that? So I ended up uh, networking with uh, a broker out in Houston. His name is Elijah. Um, yeah. And he ended up bringing me a lot of deals. Yeah. Um, and like at first, cause you know, some realtors are not the best. And so yeah. like, I was kind of skeptical of him. But like right out the gate, like day one, he had like presented me deals, and like he had probably over now he sent me like hundreds of deals. Yeah. And he finds them on the MLS, mm. and he finds them like in distressed condition, and yeah. he negotiates the hell out of them for me. Mm. And so, <clears throat> you know, leveraging that, and then the hard money lender uh, relationships, and then the HUDs that I had, like it was yeah. pretty easy to start picking up those many deals at a time. Got it. Okay. And then what happened the next year? So the next year, um, I wanted to, you know, double that. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, well, I need a bigger team. And yeah. so, because, like, my uh, TC and assistant slash everything else, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. she wasn't going to cut it. So, um, you know, I uh, ended up breaking up the role. So I was like, okay, I need an assistant and yeah. I need a TC. Yeah. And then because I was having so many projects going out at once, I was like, I need a project manager. So yeah. I ended up getting two project managers. And they helped me out tremendously. And then I wanted a project manager who would just was, I didn't want anybody that had to teach. Like mm -hmm. I wanted a project manager to just go and like, just get do ready it. and yeah. do it. And like, I ended up finding somebody who is like 20, 25 years of construction experience, mm -hmm. but they're just older. Like they're tired. They don't want to, um, you know, continue to like go yeah. out and find deals and do all these things. So I told them, I was like, Hey, like, I need a project management. I know that's probably like way less than what you could possibly could get at a, like an, a job, a commercial yeah. job or whatever type of job. But like, um, I think you do great for what I need. And they were like, yeah, like they were open to it. And um, what helped is that they had their own set of c crews. So now my construction costs went extremely low. So mm. now I'm able to get, m you know, material and labor, you know, super low minus the GC fee. Yeah. So now I'm saving money on my rehabs and be able to make more money. And then it helps them out in their business because I'm keeping them in business in yeah. a sense. And um, actually, I want to buy their business, but you know that's a whole other thing. What about like so? How much do you pay your project manager? So I pay them like per. Um, it's kind of like a little bit mix of per month and then per door. Yeah. So I would say like right now like fifteen hundred per door. Yeah. But I want to do it to where I'm like paying them fifteen hundred per door and like a percentage because I want to get them incentivized to like get more doors for me. Yeah. 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 I think um, a lot of people they think like oh I can't afford it but I pay my project manager per door. Yeah. Um, I pay him like seven fifty. Mm -hmm. Um, and he manages the whole project. Yeah. So like if you're starting off. And you don't want to sit here and manage the whole project, get a project manager, and yeah. then go look for more deals. Because mm -hmm. instead of, like, saving that $750 yeah. for one, two months' worth of work, I could go get another deal. For that $750, you are going to be able to make a lot more just by finding more deals. Yep. Yeah. And it's not that expensive. Like, at first, I thought I was going to be like, oh, my God, 10 k project manager. But I'm like, no, it's not, yeah. not even close. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so you got that. And then who else did you add to your team? Um, my business partner, Amethyst. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you got a business partner. There okay. she is. Shout yeah. out to you. So I'm like, I know I have uh, all this money that I need to raise. So I'm like, I need somebody to help me. And that's exactly mm. what she does. So she private money lends. Actually, that's how we met. So I needed money for a deal. Yeah. And then um, I uh, ended up meeting her through somebody. I actually don't even remember who they are. I don't talk yeah. to them. But met them through met her through them and then I had this deal and I was like this is a great deal like you need to like lend on it you know these are the numbers and um she had like this underwriter <laughs> at the time the underwriter was like no don't do the deal it's not a good deal yeah. um you know she's got too many deals going on at this time and I ended up like going off on him and I was like <laughs> I was, was that the deal that we no helped you with or a different no one? that was a different deal okay. yeah well actually now that I'm thinking about it, it might have been yeah it might have been but um that deal like he was like no it's like you know just he was the type of person where he was very like, you know, oh, everything's going to go wrong. And yeah. like, that wasn't the case. And so I sat there and I like wrote an email back to him and I was like, no, like, I think you're really wrong on this. Like yeah. your opinion is valid, but it's wrong. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I was like, this is the reason why you should invest in the deal. Like I solely believe in this deal. Like this is like the deal they need to invest into. And she ended up still passing on it. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and so I was like, I called her. I remember calling her and I was like, that was a mistake. Like you yeah. should have won on that deal because I'm so confident on that deal. Yeah. And so um, ended up doing that flip in like 120 days. Dang. Yeah, top to bottom. 
ARV like 550, sold it in two days. Damn. Damn. And how much you make on that one? 70,000. Dang. Yeah, it was a good deal. So, and that was after paying off like private money as well. Yeah. So I'm like, I knew it was a good deal. Like I had confidence. I knew the area really well too. So I was like, I know that this one's going to be like, un, you know, home run. Yeah. And so then we ended up, I ended up having another deal around the same time that I was acquiring. So I told her, I was like, hey, well, she, she actually told me like hey i want to still keep in contact with you and so yeah. like like let's keep on working together so we ended up doing that deal and then um the next deal she ended on that one and then same thing i closed on that one but like later mm -hmm. not as fast uh, unfortunately yeah. but we still talk about it to this day like you know you should have done the first one I yeah said. <laughs> <laughs> but um uh so that's how we became like known of each other and then after that deal we're like you know we work pretty well together so like we should you know team up yeah. and then she had money so i'm like how do you because she's, she's young just like me yeah um, yeah so i was like okay well how are you finding money and yeah. she then explained to me well you can leverage like you know roth iras and like 401ks and like yeah. you know business credit and all this other stuff and then i was like well i need that for the business like we, yeah. need, we need that and so mm. you know we just became business partners got it yeah okay so then how many deals, what's like the most you've made on one deal? I would say um, the most I've made on one deal would probably be like 160000 You made $160,000 on one deal? Yeah. Damn. But like, I say that, but we have like luxury deals that we're working on right now that will like surpass that. Okay. Yeah. So now you're moving into like luxury more. Yeah. Okay. Which, which is my business partner. She was like, you know, you should get into luxury. And I was like, hell no. And yeah. then <laughs> she was just like, no, like you should do it. And then I was like, and then one, literally like that same week or a week after, like one fell into my lap and I was like, okay, like let's do yeah. it. Like, and then I ended up loving luxury deals because like the type of buyers, like, you know, these buyers, they're like third or fourth time buying a home. Yeah. So they call for a different type of like, you know, type of quality. And yeah. like, I love designing those type of houses. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. I just, I love the part. I love the, for, from flipping, designing. I love that part. Yeah. Yeah. What about like, who manages acquisitions now? Me. Okay. So you do. I still do. Yeah. What about marketing? Marketing, I would say a little bit of a mix of both of us. But how, what, what kind of marketing do you guys do? So for marketing right now, it's really just like word of mouth. Um, I have my website and uh -huh. then um, Instagram, yeah. like my socials. Um, but I do want to get into like lead kitchen and things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's get really like marketing. I love I love the concept of it. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, so let's transition now. You know, you're killing it, you're you're making a living. So what is like the next level you think for your career? The next level for my career would be so if there's this like um saying like, Can you leave your can you go on a fishing trip and leave your business? Which yeah. basically means like um, you know, if you were to go out for like a week or two weeks, can your business run without you? Yeah, yeah, And yeah, like, yeah. will nobody call you? Yeah. You know, I'm sure people will call you, but like, will nobody yeah. call you? So like, that's like my goal. Like, I want to bring more people to the team and I want to have somebody in acquisition in my place. Like, yeah. I want to fill in the roles, right? Like, I did an org charge and everything like that. And so I want to fill some of the roles that I'm currently doing, which is not too much, which is like marketing <coughs> acquisitions. Um, and then fill those spots up. And then have somebody like just m continue to like integrate that and just have it like run. And then I, I want to get into like rentals. Okay. And then start building up that <coughs> portfolio. Yeah. And then just basically be present but not present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then from there, like I want that business, I mean, could easily, I want it to make at least like a million. Yeah. Like every year consistently. Yeah. And then I want to move into like once that's like already going, I want to actually move into like a construction company. Okay. Yeah. Because I think that would work hand in hand. Yeah. And then actually, I have this business idea. Okay. Yeah, it's the first time hearing on the podcast. Okay. Okay. So this, it's like a do it for you, do it for your, do it for you service. Sorry. Okay. And basically, like you mentioned, like you know, you started off, you had, you know, all this experience, and you're like, oh, just five hundred bucks, I'm gonna teach you everything I know. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people out there that like are scared to take that jump, uh -huh. and like there's a lot of people who also have money that just you know. They don't know what to do with it or maybe they just don't even want to go out and like do the hard work to like flip a house or yeah. like wholesale or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. so what i want to do is i want to just do it for you so mm. i want my company who has the experience who has the huds who who's going to get the right contractor for you who knows how to do it top to bottom who knows how to run the numbers like completely taking away all the mistakes that i made and like you know you don't have to go through that like you know you'll basically we'll, we'll do basically do everything for you so we'll help yeah. you find the deal yeah. We'll help you fund the deal. Uh -huh. We'll help you do the construction. And then we'll help you list it. And yeah. so 
you as the investor, you're still going to make your 10%, right? Like you're going to make whatever it is that you want um, or that the deal will have. But the way we'll make money is like we will, when we find the deal, we'll, we'll have the, it will wholesale that deal to you. Mm -hmm. So we'll make an assignment on that. Yeah. And then from there, when it will help you find a deal, we'll either partner with hard money and get like a broker fee from that. Or, yeah. um, you know, my business partner will help you find like the gaps that you need. So mm -hmm. we'll make money on connecting that way. Mm -hmm. And then from there, the construction, when I have the construction company, like I'll make a GC fee from that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll pair, I'll, I'll partner up with my broker and mm -hmm. then we'll get a percentage there. Got it. Yeah. Okay. But, okay, well, so how are you going to get to seven figures flipping? Um, bringing more people to the team. And okay. then, Who honestly, <clears throat> so I need to bring an acquisitions manager. And okay. then I need a... Um, how many do you think you need? I think at least two. Yeah. yeah. I'd say like two to three, yeah. Yeah, two for sure. And then I want to need to pour more money into marketing. Okay. Yeah, like doing po more things like this podcast. Yeah. Building on my following a social media team. <coughs> so that way it's going to be like you know kind of just coming people are going to come to me yeah and that's going to be like the next biggest thing for me i feel like you could do for your size you could do agent outreach with like two new acquisition people mm -hmm. pay them commission only yeah and then let them prove that they could actually do deals and then turn on like some paid marketing mm -hmm. or if you do paid marketing you would have to handle the leads first yeah to make sure they convert and then you guys make money, but I feel like you're only like a few steps away. So for a seven figure operation, right? You need acquisitions. Mm -hmm. We already talked about, right. right? Most acquisitions you need like two to three because there's going to be turn. Mm -hmm. And then you could pay them anywhere from like 10 to 20% per deal. Mm -hmm. I would suggest trying to not pay a base because then that adds up. And then if they don't perform, you're just out. Right. Then marketing. So... What we do right now, we do three, we do four things actually. It's crazy. We do agent outreach. Okay. So we're texting agents every single day. Mm -hmm. We send out like two to 4,000 texts a day. Who's texting the agents? Uh, we have someone on our team named Brianna. Okay. Yeah. So you can, you can get a VA to do it, honestly. Okay. Yeah, I was just about to say, like, can yeah. a VA do something like yeah, that? Yeah, a VA could do it for sure. Yeah. Um, and it's part time work. So she doesn't, it's not her full time job. Okay. Yeah. So it'll probably take two to three hours a day. And we're sending out 4,000. That's, like, high. Mm -hmm. You want to start off probably sending out, like, 2,000 a day. Okay. Um, so you could do agent outreach. Like, the cost per lead is very low. It's mm -hmm. probably, like, 5 to $10 a lead. Okay. Yeah. You're looking for off-market deals. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing uh, seller texting. You could do that, too. Um, that one's a little – it's a little bit harder because those leads, they need, like, long nurture time. Mm -hmm. So if you get a lead today, it might not close for, like, three to six months. Oh, okay. But they're cheap, but they're just long. Mm -hmm. um, then you could do Lead Kitchen with Ryan. I'm doing Lead Kitchen. I think, like, our first six leads, we've gotten, like, two contracts already. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Are you still doing it out in California? Cali. Yeah. Cali. All Cali, yeah. Yeah. So um, – one of them's a probate. It's going to take a couple months. One of them, we just locked up. We have to see if we could try to dispo it. But Lead Kitchen, the good thing is, like, they're inbound leads, um, and they're they're ready. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, like, why are or you Or do you want to sell? Or like, yeah, no, yeah. Like, yeah, I want to sell. Like, yeah, they, to go. they put in their information. They know what they're, what they're doing. So there's that. And then we're doing PPC. So PPC is good. It's just expensive. Yeah, I was just about yeah. to say. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I got an ad for Lead Kitchen yesterday. Oh, really? You yeah, they're it? like, do you want to sell your house? I said, yeah. I want, I've been buying houses for Las Vegas for yeah. 10 years. <laughs> yeah. And I got it. I was like, it's so funny. While you were here in Texas. While I was here. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Literally yesterday in the hotel. Like, oh, that's good. I got good. it. And I was like, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. So um, those are the four that I'm doing. PPC, Lead Kitchen, Texting Agents, and then Texting Sellers. Mm -hmm. Um. They all work. You just have to work them, and mm -hmm. then it's a it's a it's a varying degree of work. So, another analogy I love to tell people, right? And I know people get pissed when I talk, but f you if you're listening to this <laughs> and you don't like me talking on my own podcast. But um, <laughs> so, let's say, how could I use a good analogy with you being a woman and it not sound weird? I don't think. I mean, I don't. What care. are you good at? Sports? What sport are you good at? I was really good at basketball. Believe it. Basketball. Or not. Okay, yeah. so let's just say you are playing basketball against someone who's not as good, okay. right? Who's going to win? Me. You, right? Because yeah. it's one-on-one. -on -one, right. Right? Two entrepreneurs, head-to-head -head going at it. The better one's going to win. Yeah. Right? Okay. 
Now let's say that person that's not as good is has a team member. There's two of them, and they're playing against you in basketball. Who's going to win? They're going to win. They're going to win, or you might win. You I mean, I, I, I was, I was going to say me, but I know that yeah. sounds cocky. But yeah, 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 no, you can say you. <laughs> yeah, no, two entrepreneur, def- one entrepreneur going against two, I right? I definitely win. Yeah. yeah. What about if there's four of them? I'm going to say I'm still going to win. Just cause. Yeah, but what if they're somewhat good at basketball, and two of them stand on each side, one of them stands at the free throw, one of them can shoot threes? Probably lose. Yeah. You're probably going to lose, yeah. right? Just in sheer work output, right? Right. And different skill sets. Right. It's the same thing with acquisitions. Mm -hmm. The problem with most companies is they're relying on one person and that one person is also doing other roles. Yeah. So when they have an off day, they don't hit acquisitions. But if there's, if you have four people, it's unlikely that they're not going to all miss. And Mm -hmm. if they're only doing acquisitions, Mm -hmm. they're going to beat you. Yeah, hundred percent. I think they were talking about that yesterday. You know, like, um, you. I think Javier was talking about that. He was like, you know, you gotta bite the bullet when you take the step back when somebody's gonna do the acquisitions for you. Like, they're yeah. not gonna be as great as you. Yeah. Um, at first, but yeah. you have to let them like mess up, and you're gonna have to let them like, you know, do what they need to do yeah. to get better, so that eventually they are the acquisition teams that you need to have. Yeah. yeah. So I used to. There's like a couple things. So when I first started, there was a thing called Me We You. So first, or I, me, I, we, you, me, we, you, however you want to say it. Yeah. So first, you are doing acquisitions. You, me, I am the only one doing acquisitions. Then you need to transition to we are doing acquisitions. Yeah. So but me and my team are doing acquisitions. And then it's you are doing acquisitions. I am stepping out of that role. Yeah. So do you get it? Yeah, it's it makes sense. I, we, you. The, what most people, where they make the biggest mistake is they go, I, you. Mm. Right? Yeah. And then they'll bring someone into the organization and they're like, hey, I'm going to stop looking for deals because now I have an acquisition person. Yeah. And then that acquisition person doesn't perform. And now you're back 30 to 60 days with no deals. And mm-hmm. then you have to hop back in there. Yeah. And, and then, then you're you back do in square again. one. Exactly. Yeah. So just that middle step of like, hey, like I'm going to keep doing acquisitions while I train you. Mm-hmm. And then once you're trained and you're going, great. Yeah. Then I could step out. But people miss that middle part. They try to go to just me to you. Right. When it needs to be me, we, you. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I was yeah. talking, I was talking, uh, talking about that with Andrew yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, and like, I mean, he's he's great, but, um, you know, going into sales, like having a sales background, like I used to teach people. You know, it's funny because I used to teach like grown, you know, men, and I was like super young. Yeah. About you know sales and how to sell the certain product that we needed to sell, mm-hmm. but like you you realize like you know, yes, you, you have to train and teach people, but there's also some people that are just not going to get it. Like, oh, yeah. there's just going to, they just don't have the drive. And like you said, like the mindset, you know, that yeah. plays a big factor into it. Yeah. And I think you're going to, might have to go with like, go through a few people to finally get that one or two, three people that are going to be there on your team. Who's going to, you know, have, make it go to the next level. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's inspiring for you to come on the podcast too, because there's people listening to this for sure that are going to be way older than you when you started they you know every excuse in the book right but you made it happen Mm -hmm. so like that's what people need to understand it's like it's not about where you're at or what you've done or what you have it's like can you put in the hustle yeah to make it work yeah Uh, people always ask me like oh like i wish i was your age you know in this this and that and i was like well what's the problem with your age like why can't you start now oh for sure you know like to me it doesn't make a difference like i'm I'm happy that I started young, but like I wouldn't see myself any difference if I started ten years ago, later. You know? Yeah, yeah, no. There's a there's there's no difference because anyone can be successful in real estate, no matter your race, sex, age, ethnicity, whatever it is. Yeah. Like it just mm-hmm. takes hustle and you know effort. 100%. That's it. Where that's people think it's knowledge that they're missing. But it's not knowledge. It's well, just it's sheer an, effort. It's an everyday grind, you know? Like, you have yeah. to be willing. And that's a mental battle, too. Like, you have to be willing to 
wake up every day and wanting to do this. Yeah. Which I do. Like, I wake up every single day and I'm like, I want to go out and find deals. Like, I want to go out and flip a house. Like, I love it. I love doing yeah. it. Like, I'm, it's like an obsession for me. Like, I love it. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I think the only thing that's stopping you from making seven figures is acquisitions. That's it. Uh, no, I 100%. We were talking about that pretty much, like, the entire trip. I'm like, we need, to, whenever I get back, like, that needs to be the focus for the next you know, quarter, like yep. acquisitions, acquisitions, acquisitions. Like I need to find a shark salesperson or yep. I need to train a shark salesperson who's going to do exactly how I wanted to do it. And yeah. they need to, you know, or we need to do it together yeah. and like grow that. And then once that's, you know, there, I mean, to your point, like I think we I could definitely hit it, you yeah. know, for sure. Is there anything else you think that's stopping you from making seven figures? Um, I think some of my team is like a little bit, not in state like some of them like my best friend for example yeah. who like i trained from pretty much nothing she uh she lives out in um miami and yeah. so if she was here like it would make a or in texas it would make yeah. a huge difference so um i would say like i do want people to be like there i think that makes a huge difference because i can't i can't teach them what they can't see you yeah, know yeah, like yeah, when yeah, we're yeah. at a house like and like you know, something's going wrong. I can't teach that to anybody because. But what would you teach that person over there? So, because right now, like sh we are doing the acquisitions, me and her. Like oh, I'm, so I'm she's a, helping. She's helping, but like I'm, I'm saying I'm doing it because I haven't really given her that many tasks for me to confidently be like, yeah, she's helping me with yeah, the acquisitions. Yeah, yeah. But technically, if you were to look at our art chart, she's doing it with me. Mm -hmm. And so, but the biggest struggle with that is that she's not here. So how can I have her go walk houses? You know, yeah. how can she go? And like meet up with sellers. Well, how do you train? Because like all all the properties we do are in California. Yeah, we're all here. Mm -hmm. We're not. We don't walk properties. You don't. No, None of them? I live in Cal I live in Vegas. That's fair. You don't have anybody out there who's like boots on the ground who's gonna walk it for you. No. You just pick it up. I just pick it up. Maybe I just need to change that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's another gem right there. Yeah. You don't need. I mean, people do virtual all the time. Yeah. So your your all your your acquisitions virtual? No, they're all here. They're all here. They're all here, but all the houses we're doing in are California. in California. Okay. Actually, I do have one virtual person in California. Okay. I forgot. So I do have one virtual person in California, um, but even the most I've made in, in, in real estate in a year is like 1.1, and both of my acquisition people were virtual. We didn't work together in an office because it was like during COVID. Oh, okay. So... I didn't have an office for them to go to. And mm -hmm. I and I, at the time, I just didn't want to deal with that. Yeah. So they were always virtual. So it's definitely possible. Yeah. Maybe I just need to change my approach. Yeah. 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 So are you still going to be doing flips, like, long term? Or are you going to, like, transition to this new, like, Well, you know? this is what I'm doing. So um, I'm definitely doing more wholesaling innovations. I was already doing that because I was just tired of being broke all the time. Yeah. Because I'm like, dude, I'm just so tired of dumping money into these houses. And then another wisdom thing for you, right? So I always say this every event. You've probably heard me say it. You can make a lot of money flipping houses. Yeah. You could also lose a lot of money flipping houses. Yeah, 100%. And no one thinks they're going to lose. Yeah. No one thinks. I've lost, like, big. And I'm yeah. like crap yeah, yeah. it sucks and you have to have the deals coming like yeah yeah it's like i like i always tell you know my business partner like we need more deals because yeah. at any given moment any of these can go sideways oh for sure yeah for sure and that's so with flipping there's that risk so as you scale i've seen people lose everything damn everything and i'm talking about great investors not like oh this little idiot that just started. I'm talking about like great investors lose yeah. everything from flipping houses. Mm -hmm. So to be a healthy real estate business, in my opinion, you need like wholesaling, mm -hmm. you need flipping, and then you need rentals. And then I would put novations in the same category as like wholesaling. Okay. Because it's like low risk, mm -hmm. you know, but longer escrow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just think you need all three. Do you do like any type of creative financing or anything like that? No, I no. haven't. Do you, I, do you like that? Or uh, I mean, I, I would be open to it. I just yeah. haven't. Okay. One thing I am not for is buying houses at market value. Okay. I think that's just terrible. Like subject to, you mean? I mean, it could be anything. Like okay. some, just buying houses market value to me is just such a bad idea. Yeah. Especially when you could find deals below 
70 percent like yeah. why yeah that it doesn't, make, doesn't sense. make any sense yeah, yeah. so i think for me i just want to i'm still flipping i'm still i bought like two flips last month we're wholesaling i'm i am personally trying to build my operations like ryan where i am not in the day-to-day -day. yeah so i'm currently not talking to sellers mm -hmm. i'm not dialing all that crap but i've been doing this for a long time so i've been right. doing it for eight years you yeah. just started so you gotta like get in the reps mm -hmm. So that way you could transfer that knowledge to your acquisition people. And so then yeah. you have like a, um, uh, like a, a designer, like who designs all these houses? Uh, the you? project manager. The project manager. Okay. Yeah. So he just straight does it. Has yeah. he ever, has like the project manager ever like messed up so bad that it was like no. messed up the deal for you? No, no, no. Okay. So I'm, I'm like anti design. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I've just I just don't care. So what do you like about flipping the house then? I don't like anything about flipping houses. You just no, like, you just want to make, like make money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, yeah I know. That's, so I mean, funny. that's real though. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's it's weird because people are like, oh, like, don't you love to see the transformation? And I'm like, honestly, I can care less. I can care less. Yeah. It doesn't even. It my my thrill is like getting the deals, mm -hmm. but it's weird now because. Like, we, we got, a, like, a 15K wholesale fee, like, two days ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I cashed a check, and then I just – I threw it on the floor of my car. And then I'm just, like, off, you know, driving, doing other stuff. And then I'm, like it, – it's, like, you could just get become numb to it. Yeah. It's not, like – you just become numb to it. So what is exciting me is – building the company back up because I let it die. So that was another stupid mistake I made. Why'd you let it die? Because I was being an idiot. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So that's a different podcast. Was it like because of COVID? <laughs> 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 was it because well, of COVID I let it last whatever? year. No, oh. 2023. I let it die because uh -huh. I I just let a new idea kind of take everything. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I want to do this. What was that? Uh, it was just, I was just focusing everything on education. Oh, okay, okay. Instead of, I've always done both. Well, first mm -hmm. I just did real estate and then I did education and then I was like, I'm going to just do all education because it's less risk and blah, 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 yeah. and it's faster. But then I made less money yeah. because I let half of my business die. Right. So that was a stupid mistake. So if you learn anything from that, if something's working, even if you're tired of it, figure out how to delegate it. Yeah. Don't let it just die. Die. Yeah. Exactly. It's so dumb. So I did that. But um, yeah, I just want to, what will excite me is if I build the company, it's operating like you said, I come in, I help, I help mm -hmm. manage it, but I am not the one that it's on all on my back. Yeah, no. Like, yeah, I don't want that. And then, well, not only that, but it's like you're basically just working a nine to five at exactly. that point. I don't yeah. want to. I, I didn't go into business to work a nine to five. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of business owners that are stuck in that mindset. Like, and, and that's another thing, too. Like, there's some people out there that just don't want the help. Like, they yeah, refuse yeah, yeah. to ask for the help. They don't think anybody could do it better than them. Yeah. And, like, I... I have no shame. I like there's people on my team that are better than me and I want that. Yeah, for sure. I want people who to be better than me, especially like my project manager. They're a hundred percent better than me when it comes to construction yeah. and like managing the construction. And that's exactly what I need for the business. Yeah. yeah. I want everyone my I want my acquisition team to be way better than me. I want yeah. everyone to be better than me. I don't I don't to me I'm like I just want to have a good business and be able to live the lifestyle that I want. Yeah. That excites me. That's but, it. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So if people want to find you because they want to work with you or yeah. lend you money, where do they go? You can go on my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is your Instagram? <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's Kaylin, K-A-T-E-L-Y-N-N-O-R-T-I-Z, and then one more Z, Kaylin Ortiz. Got it. Okay, and, and then, then is there anything else you want to leave the beginner listeners with? before we wrap up um if you're looking to invest in some deals we have a bunch of them there we go so guys thank you so much for coming on i'm excited to watch your growth thank you yeah and yeah. um if you're still here thank you so much for watching subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode peace